Splatterhouse has never been a top-tier game franchise. In a time when it seemed like every video game company was walking on eggshells, Splatterhouse was sold on the idea of blood, guts, and all sorts of other gruesomeness. It was the brawler for people that were sick of mutants and street gangs. Even with simple gameplay and straightforward level structures, Namco's horror franchise seemed to work. Although many gamers remember Splatterhouse, the TurboGrafx-16 game, it was not this franchise's first home console release. That honor goes to Splatterhouse Wanpaku Graffiti, an obscure 1989 Famicom game. Despite the success of the series in both the US and Europe, Namco never ported this 2D action game to the Nintendo Entertainment System. And even today, 21 years later, the game remains hard to find. In a wise move, Splatterhouse Wanpaku Graffiti doesn't attempt to recreate the 16-bit action of the original arcade games. Instead, it gives us a brand new adventure, complete with a different enemy and exciting new levels. And you know what? The whole thing is a lot more fun than it deserves to be. Dare I say, it's actually better than the more technically advanced games that it was born out of. The idea is simple. You play Rick, the masked hero of the arcade game. As the game starts, we learn that Rick has died and left Jennifer to cry over his grave. But out of nowhere comes a lightning bolt, which magically brings our hero back to life. Unfortunately, another lightning bolt brings the Pumpkin King back to life, who quickly kidnaps Jennifer, and we start the whole dance all over again. Don't get too comfortable because Splatterhouse Wanpaku Graffiti has a major twist up its sleeve. The ending is genuinely shocking, not something you tend to say about an 8-bit horror game. I'm not saying the big reveal is on the same level as The Sixth Sense or Psycho, but it's significantly better than what we were getting in 1989. There are a few interesting twists on the Splatterhouse theme. For one thing, you gain experience every time you kill an enemy. The more baddies you take down, the more life you'll have. You'll need this additional life to take on the insane bosses, many of which resemble fights you had from the arcade, Turbo Graphics, and Genesis games. This one change may not sound like much, but it is significantly deeper than what we are used to. Unfortunately, the trade-off is a lack of additional features. Players get a single battle axe, which never seems to dull or get bloody. From time to time, players will have a chance to pick up a shotgun, but most of the weapons from the arcade game are MIA in this 8-bit title. I also found that the background repeated a bit too much for my taste, and like most 8-bit games, there are a few too many cheap deaths. Splatterhouse is made even worse by only giving you one life and four continues. Splatterhouse Wanpaku Graffiti sports seven unique levels, along with two secret, super secret bonus stages. These nine levels offer you some traditional Splatterhouse locales, including a graveyard, hell house, and a spooky campground. But don't get too cozy because the secret stages take our hero all around the world. In the first secret stage, our masked Axeman uh, will be flown to Japan to take on undead nasties. The tone is decidedly goofier this time around, which is a wise decision given the technical limitations. It's hard to take a game seriously when everybody has super deformed heads. Even if you took away the oversized heads, players would still be left with a bloodless game where everybody comes straight out of a Looney Tunes cartoon. Fans of the main series may disagree, but I would argue that this cartoony visuals help the game hold up better than its 16-bit counterparts. This 8-bit Splatterhouse is far from perfect, yet even when I was suffering through cheap deaths, I still found myself wanting to come back for more. I love the tongue-in-cheek sense of humor, and there's no getting around the game's stellar twist ending. 
it may not be the most technologically advanced game in the series, but Splatterhouse 1 Paku Graffiti is worth the experience. <laughs>